the saga continues on this 2000 Dodge Dakota. So on this old Dakota, it's not worth that much money. It has a lot of miles, it's old. This is, I got more story if you watched the other two previous videos on this where the compressor was changed. Uh, I got history that the receiver dryer was changed. Um, this was a good old customer to the mechanic at the shop and he tried to save them money uh, did not call me down to do the initial very first diagnosis and um, trying to save the customer money and so he jumped to the conclusion because there was a little oil stain around a receiver dryer he replaced it this is the second that's the third receiver dryer um, so the receiver dryer was changed and then a little while later it ran out of refrigerant again and uh but did not call me and he's seen oil all up right right up in here kind of like puddled right up in here all around the seam and everything like that and that's what i told you on the last video the the first and second one about this compressor and about oil balancing and about the instructions inside the manufacturer who re, uh rebuilt this or even new and they just put it down as rebuilt or it was new I'm not sure um, the instructions are wrong on how to balance the oil right out of the factory box and that was a Denso and I like Denso okay so that was another issue but they didn't have me coming up just come down and fill it that's all just want to pay for that keep the price down and I kind of questioned because notice the oil color was not green from my dye that was up in here and um, I did the recharge it was working but uh, I noticed the thermal fan clutch wasn't working right and it had really low airflow so I told them about that and it was just free spinning and it was their original from 2000 so they just did that yesterday I'm down here and then if you've seen in my last video I found the leak the, the initial leak from the very beginning that was the whole cause of the beginning of the snowball chain of events um, the expansion valve was leaking now they replaced the expansion valve and um, turned out to be a little bit harder than it looks really easy but it turned out to be a little bit more cumbersome and time consuming than he thought he thought it was only going to be like 30 minutes but t ended up having to take the pipe and everything off back here and since he was already taking stuff off and uh, liquid, uh, the liquid line, he just got another expansion valve. Uh, he knows he made a mistake. He admitted it. And um, he's eating the cost of the compressor because he knows he made a mistake on the diagnosis. This is a real good honest mechanics. And honest mechanics don't always make the most money. This is true. Uh, he's eating the cost of the compressor and the labor. He just put in the receiver dryer because he feels good about it because the system's been open and closed a few times even though he did that a few months ago out of his pocket he put that in he's charging her for the initial parts and and cost and reduced labor of the expansion valve and i've been out here so many times and there's so many little different issues on this one that usually sometimes this kind of customer i've i've waived some of my fees but I, I will at least, I'll charge them for like an initial leak detection. And uh, that should have been done at the very, very beginning. And then charge them for the recharge and uh, everything like that. I, I, won't, I won't double charge them. Uh, I really like this technician. I like his shop. And he is the kind of ethics in this business you do not find anymore very very rarely and uh, so charge this up oh short story short this had if you could see down in this hole the white the white is thermal grease like you put on um, cpus in a computer or remember old uh, ford or gm modules a thick film in the distributor and you'd put the white dielectric grease for the heat sinking grease that's what that is so this was discontinued and not made anymore and this was the original it has the dodge emblem on it so they couldn't get the sensor because the original dodge came with the sensor let's see if i could zoom in on it 
and it looks like that's not going to really happen today. I can't zoom in on it. And of course, I have my light off again, and I don't have a light, but right, right where you can't see when my finger falls back there, there's a uh, about one and a half inch square piece of plastic, and it has the wire with the sensor that goes down into this hole. Well, he ordered a aftermarket expansion valve, and when it came, the grease that was inside there was so hard, you couldn't get anything in there. It literally dried out like a brick. And the O-rings that were on it weren't quite right. Uh, as you can see, this has the metal gasket. These O-rings are kind of squared off and dried and hard and crusty, and they kind of retain their shape. They have no more elasticity anymore to them. And um, let's see if you can see on the high pressure side the small hole there's a little grain and that's from running hot before when it ran on off of refrigerant a few times this is not bad at all a little bit of powdery residue inside there of grayness from the compressor running while it was running out of refrigerant another place they leak from they'll leak from the adjustment valve down there at the o-ring down there that's another leak point so about to perform the recharge go off to my next I'm about two shops behind on time this morning because I had to stop by with my son for a little bit and give him a hand on that commercial job which you'll see a video in a little while um, and that commercial job because of the recovery tanks I got that I did a, a video about drawing a nice good vacuum on them ended up having a leak under pressure and I lost some of my refrigerant as I was trying to weigh it out so I could figure out my leak rate over how many years that system has been charged so I can kind of get an indicator on because it's a variable compressor and you don't just do superheat or subcooling on them like a normal system and uh, it ended up leaking and so it threw my um, weight measurements off and I couldn't trust them so I had to start from scratch and I have to purchase the gas out of my pocket to refill and I did that for that customer and then I went back this morning for another recovery tank, like you see in the video a couple videos ago. Another one, and when I got there and I picked it up, it had the plastic, uh, non-tamper plastic around the knobs when you get them brand new, and these are reman brand new. When I got to the job site, 30 minutes away, up on the roof, ready to do recovery, and I broke away the plastic, the low side knob was turned about a turn and a half, and the little caps on the quarter inch caps that low side one was loose so it sucked air into the tank it ruined the tank i cannot put refrigerant in a tank like that and then put it back into a customer's uh system especially a system especially even a system that i stand behind and i sell the lg systems I will not introduce any air or any moisture because those units and those systems are supposed to last 40 years. 20 years would be a good long life, 15 with today's stuff, uh, but my grandchild will be working on those units, theoretically. That's about it on this one, and you'll see video on the commercial units I was doing. I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Any questions, just ask questions, and I'll see if I could get back to you and answer you.